What's up guys, welcome to another episode working on the E36 Vert Ute that will soon have a rotary engine in it. Super exciting episode ahead. We're doing the fun stuff today. We're putting coilovers in, we're putting the wide body on and we're putting some rad wheels on the front. Uh, a couple of updates, so obviously you know we have our 13B engine over here sitting in the corner waiting to be cleaned up and made ready to go into our E36 engine bay but now we also have a six speed RX-8 gearbox and now all I'm waiting on is a clutch setup, flywheel and a starter motor. We've got the drive shaft as well, we've actually got two. I didn't realize that it looks by the looks of things, the automatic drive shaft and the manual drive shaft are the same. Although this one's like super lightweight, like funky, crazy drive shaft, which is rad. And then this one is the metal normal style drive shaft. So I think we're gonna go with the lightweight one, obviously. We basically have everything we need now to, to get into the 13B install, but that will be in another episode. I've also gone out, we've purchased these two-piece raised engineering wheels for the front, but they're not gonna stay looking like this. I'm gonna show you guys how to get super budget, big boy dish from uh, a very cheap set of wheels. They cost me $150, including Goodride semi-slick tires on them that are almost brand new, which is freaking a really good deal. They're gonna be going on the front of our E36. And then, and then of course, we have the coilovers. Now, Max Speeding Rods have come on board for this build and have supplied us with a set of coilovers. And this is the first thing we're gonna be installing into the car. I always see a lot of comments about Max Speeding Rods coilovers. Here's what I think about them, right? I run them in my E36 for the first couple of years of drifting. These are cheap, but they actually do a relatively good job, especially if you're looking to get into drifting on a budget. 350 bucks to have your car fully height adjustable is pretty ridiculous. Uh, not to mention, they do handle a lot better than stock suspension. They're gonna get you out on track and they're gonna get you drifting. This is gonna be kind of our fun car where we just go to drift days and have a good time, not worry too much about putting down too much power and just having a good time and staying indoors with mates. These coilovers are gonna be perfect. Funnily enough, the Vert actually already has Max Speeding Rods coilovers in the rear of the car. And these are the damper adjustable ones, just like the ones we're about to put in. And I've tested them, so if we wind them all the way out to soft, all right, and then we push the car, it's nice, soft, and springy, okay? So that would allow us to get more grip. Then you wind them all the way in to stiffen it up, and then we push on the car, and all of a sudden, it's super stiff. So the damper adjustments in them work super well. But uh, yeah, let's get these coilovers in the car. Shout out Max Speeding Rods. You guys are awesome. Hit the link below in the description if you guys want to grab a set of these. There's a discount code so you can get them even cheaper, which is nuts. So, let's have a look and see what we get. So obviously, of course, the spring and shock are separate in the back of the E36. So we get our spring, we get our shock, and then of course we get our spring perch, but we will not be using this today because unless we want it to be absolutely maximum low. First thing we're gonna chuck in the rears and then you get the fronts. When I installed my coilovers into the E36, on my first track day, I actually ended up pulling this part out of the knuckle and I ended up reinforcing it uh, by welding washers in. But it looks like they've gone ahead and fixed that problem because it's a lot thicker in this spot now than it was when I bought my coilovers, so shout out Max Speeding Rods for fixing up uh, that issue. These are literally good to chuck in as they are. So first things first, we'll chuck the rears in, then we'll chuck the fronts in. Oh, look at that, quick release coilovers. <laughs> All right, so here's the old Max Speeding Rods that we pulled out. Still in great condition. Nothing really wrong with them at all. Damon flogged the crap out of them in this car as well. Still good to go. And here's the new ones that we're putting in. Because we're running the Rocket Bunny kit, we have to run this thing dirty, dirty low. Luckily, this thing already has M3 rear axles in it, so we shouldn't see any axle issues, even with the lows that we are running. As you can tell, I'm missing half of a brake disc here, so I will need to replace that. Shout out Damon. He hit the wall pretty hard with this thing, but uh, no problems at all, so uh, let's get these coilovers in, man. You. Just like that, rear's done. Two 13 mil bolts up top, one 18 mil bolt down below. We have our max speeding rods. 
suspension in the rear. Time to let it down in the rear. Hmm, better. It's actually even front and back now, which is nice. I still think I could go lower in the rear though. Time to do the fronts, but before we do the fronts, I am going to show you guys what we're gonna do with these wheels. So earlier today, I picked up these Ray's two-piece wheels. Come with these good ride semi-slick tires on them, 150 bucks for the pair. Basically what we're gonna do, because we want big boy dish, is we're gonna undo all of these bolts around here and we're gonna flip the faces so that this is the front dish now. Which might seem a little crazy to you guys, but trust me, it's gonna work, I think, perhaps, maybe. You can't do this to all two and three piece wheels, it's only some wheels that you can do them to. I was gonna do them to these wheels, right? But it turns out these wheels are four by 100, so I'm an idiot. But these are three piece and they're welded, so you'd have to basically undo all the bolts, grind the middle out so you could split the three pieces of the wheels, flip the face, and then put them all back together and then reseal it. Whereas with these ones, because this is one piece and the whole barrel is one piece, just undoing the bolts, you can push the face back turn it around and pull it back forward. And uh, it should look pretty rad. So if it works, we're going to polish the back side of the dishes quickly. I've got a little theory on how that's gonna work. And then we're gonna paint the faces black and put it all back together. So uh, see if it works. Alrighty, so we've removed the face, and obviously as you saw with my great technique, I've polished the inside of the barrel. When I say polished, I mean I sanded it down through all the grades of sandpaper. Um, and then I will chuck it on at some point again and actually use the metal polish. This should polish up pretty much brand new once I'm finished with it. But as you can see now, compared to what it was, this is the other one, that's what it did look like, the back of the wheel. And now this is what it currently looks like. And then we're gonna paint these faces black and we're gonna bolt the whole thing back together. So I'll get that done right now. But I'm already super pumped on it. Crazy, 150 bucks, deep dish wheels. Fingers crossed this all comes together how I hope it is going to and it actually all works. But it's gonna, I'm pumped. Ew. All right, so while that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and chuck the cool overs in the front of the car. Slam it out so that we can see how that wheel fits up. By the way, I failed to mention that wheel flipped around like that is probably something like a negative, maybe 70 something offset, I reckon, maybe more. Might even be negative kind of 100 offset, which would be kind of mental, but hopefully that means that we can run this wheel on the front of the vert ute with no spaces whatsoever. The vert ute has already been drilled out to five by 114 up front, so it already accepts the Nissan stub pattern, which is awesome. So no need for a conversion spacer on the hub should just bolt straight up. Alrighty, so we got the shock out, super easy. 19 mil bolt on top, 280 mil bolts down below, and 313 mil bolts up top. Boom, come straight out. So as you can see, we've got extended LCAs in this car done by Damon. Done really nicely. All brand new bushes through the LCAs as well. Uh, offset lollipop bushes. Giant sway bar with Nolothane bushes, which is awesome. I don't run a sway bar at all in my E36, so it'll be interesting to see how different this is, although I've driven this car and I know it drives amazingly, so there you go. eBay lock adapters, of course, seem to be holding up fine for now. Now we'll go ahead, chuck our new coilover in and uh, bolt it all back up. Alrighty, so we've got our max speeding rod coilover in. I've dived in maximum attack camber. Just hopefully that means that we can fit this big boy wheel under the guard. Of course, it's gonna be the rocket bunny guard anyway, so we should, we'll have a lot more width obviously with the guard. So now we're gonna put the wheel back together. I'll do the other side off camera, and then we're gonna fit the wheel and kind of see where we're at in terms of how much it pokes. Pumped. Ooh 
All right, so here's the wheel. Obviously not finished, but I've got a feeling this is gonna look absolutely ridiculous, but here we go. Test fit time. I'm gonna make this fit no matter what, so. Oh my God. Hmm, that's a little bit of poke. Woo, too much poke? <laughs> Let's have a look. Well, it's definitely still gonna poke a lot, but I do have an idea. Bear with me guys. We're gonna bolt the bottom of this wide body up now. And then I think we're gonna have a look at spacing the wide body guard out. Remember this thing is supposed to be a ridiculous car. It's not supposed to be just your normal Trying to get the drift car, so I don't mind spacing the wide body out just for a different look, but uh, we'll chuck it on and see what it looks like. <laughs> this thing is just ridiculous, though. Holy crap! Alrighty, skip to another day, and here we are. So I've gone ahead and made those brackets to space out the wide body. I've also thrown on the rear wide body, the rear wing, just to give you guys some insight into the vision inside my brain and how I want this thing to look. I'm freaking stoked on it, but this is how it looks so far. So, obviously I've put the wing on the back that I had sitting at home. Got the rear wide body. Uh, it was in two pieces. I fiberglassed it back together. Obviously we've got to do body work before we actually paint this thing. The front wide body is on with our bracket spaces. I just made these up super quick. Um, just to see how it would look kind of spaced out. But honestly, I actually, I'm fully digging the look. It's super different. It's what this car is all about. It's all about kind of provoking people a little bit. Um, kind of when people see it, just blowing their minds. And I think that the spaced out wide body on the front with these huge dish wheels just add to that vision, uh, add to the spectacle, especially with the sound of the 13B in it. So to be honest, I'm sold on the look. I think I'm gonna make up some proper brackets for it. And obviously once it's all one color, it'll come together super nice. Um, but I think it just looks absolutely insane with these wheels. These wheels are probably, like I said, negative at least 100 and offset. I'll make them work. I've got a friend who drifts an E36 actually with a similar wheel set up in America. Um, he flips three-piece wheels and has them on the front of his and he doesn't have, seem to have uh, any kind of steering issues. So hopefully I don't uh, with this either, but just, I mean, you can see the vision coming together now with the ute, the wide body. It just looks freaking epic. As you can see up here, I've tucked this under as well just to make it look a little neater. We'll actually get that all sewn up nicely. And of course along the side here as well, uh, we'll get it all sewn up nicely. But this just looks epic. I'm digging the wing. I don't know if I'll run a rear bar. And if I do run a rear, rear bar, I think I might run like a half rear bar. Because I really like that look just as it is right now. So I was going to end the video there, but it's another day. I've got a lot more time on my hands. So I went out, I grabbed some checker plate. We're going to go ahead and we're actually going to start work on the tub. I've also got some bars that we're gonna weld in here for the cross section. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead, I need to cut out uh, a bit more metal, and then we can start kind of looking at how we're gonna lay out uh, the tub and make it all connect nicely together. We're only two episodes in and already this thing has made so much freaking progress. Absolutely stoked with it. Honestly, once it's all sprayed one color, this thing is just gonna look mental. This wheel is just sitting here at the moment uh, because this is a five by one one four wheel. I need to get the hub adapters, which I will order tonight. They'll come this week, and then I can actually bolt the wheel up properly, but that's how it will sit anyway, so the vision is coming together slowly. Alrighty, so first up today, we're gonna weld in these crossbars. So, I'm literally gonna go like an X across here. I've already ground down the paint to metal so that we can weld them in. Just gotta measure them up to size. I've done this before on a previous E36. It works really well in terms of stiffening up the rear end. First bars in. Massive shout out to my gasless MIG. This thing was like 130 bucks. It's been on the channel for most of the channel's life. Look, I promise you guys I will upgrade to a gas MIG 
very soon. It's one of my things that I need to buy for the factory, but for now, the gasless MIG is going hard. We've been through many adventures, me and that gasless MIG, but uh, let's get the second bar in. Yeah, rad. Bars are in, yay! Gonna give it quick fiddly bits so that uh, we don't rust. And because it looks better. Oh yeah, bars are done, looks rad. Now it's time to start working on the floor. So I think this is gonna work quite well actually because I think I can just slide the floor in under here, underneath and then mark it out via the shape. So we'll kind of slid it in like this, and that way I can mark the shape around and then cut it out. Woo! We won't be leaving it silver though. We'll spray it all nicely black. Should look pretty damn cool. And then obviously we'll do this part, and then this part, and then that part, but I'm not sure how far we'll get tonight. So I totally didn't realize that the stuff that I bought is alloy. So, uh, can't weld it in, but that's fine. It's actually better because it's super light. So we're not adding too much weight into the rear end of our car, which is nice. So uh, we'll go ahead and slide it in. So that's the first part of the floor done. Obviously we'll do another sheet here and then sheet metal all around the outside to make it look all smooth and like a tub. Chuck a couple of tech screws in here and then uh, that's that part done. Yeah, uh, not sure whether I'll leave it silver or paint it black, but I'm pretty sure we'll paint it black. All right, so we're gonna put the last section in because I feel like I owe it to you guys to have the whole kind of bottom section in. And it just so happens that this is 600 long and from here, right perfectly to here is 600 long hell yeah so we're gonna put that in and then i'll have to buy one more sheet r.i.p my wallet because it's like 170 180 dollars a sheet to finish off this half which is mad not angry it's all good and uh then we'll have to figure out some kind of lift like cutaway or something for the fuel pump so that i can access the fuel pump if it ever dies at the track because with obviously once we cover it it'll be a real pain in the boom to access so i'll make a little door or something a little swing door that we can open and close that way we can change the fuel pump, but yeah, time to cut this. This one's a little harder because the shape changes as it goes in, but I'll measure it up, we'll chuck it in. Alrighty, time to fit it up and see if it, if it actually fits. I am tuckered out, but check this out. Woo. So we've got the about two thirds of the rear tray floor done. And I think it looks freaking rad. Definitely will be spraying it black, but uh, it's like technically kind of a ute now, which is awesome. Shout out to you guys who said put a rear wing on it because it definitely finishes the look with the rear wing on, but this thing just looks so freaking cool. Here's a quick Photoshop that I did before I even started this project or decided to buy the vert with what I had in mind for the build. I think you guys can agree, it's pretty bloody spot on. Obviously it didn't have the rear wing on that one, but this that's just a wee addition that we've done. But it looks so good. Super aggressive. I'm definitely digging it. Some two-step garage front bumper canards, and uh, I reckon we are definitely in the mix. 
feel free to chime in on what colour you guys think the car should be in the comments below. Once again, a massive shout out to Max Beating Rods for hooking up the coilovers in this build. Head to the description below, hit that link and uh, grab yourself an 8% discount if you guys want to grab yourself some coilovers to get your build started and get yourself out on track. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting these videos and the channel. Hit that like button if you are enjoying the build guys. I'd love this build to push out as far and wide as possible. And personally, I cannot wait to hit the track in this thing. Follow me on Instagram, at it's Mike Lake. And I will see you guys in the next video where we continue building this freaking crazy machine. Cheers, guys. Peace.